night You are the wish down Before time began You reign forever Your name is never gone You are the wish down Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for who you are. Holy Spirit, let your name alone be exalted. Be in the throne, Holy Spirit. Commit tonight into your hands. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Open our eyes of understanding. Minister to us afresh. Help us to hear your voice. Send us strength from Zion. Send us direction. Father, let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to just take a few minutes, just a minute, to appreciate the Lord for his mercy, for his protection, preservation. Everything he's doing in our lives, everything. That Lord, thank you for mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, your mercy. I might not have seen the things I've been trusting you for. Lord, but I say thank you for life, for preservation, for protection, for provision. The Bible says it's not by power, it's not by might. But Lord, I say thank you. I say thank you for waking me up every day, for giving me shelter, for putting clothes on me. Lord, thank you for covering my nakedness. Thank you for your preservative power over my family, over myself. Lord, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of my family, I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome every one of us <clears throat> to tonight's meeting. Tonight's topic is titled, Dying to the Flesh Daily. Dying to the Flesh Daily. Dying to the Flesh Daily. I want us to quickly open the Word of God to the book of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29 to 31. 1 Corinthians 15, 29 to 31. Um, on Tuesday, we dealt with a topic which was living ready, watching and living ready. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29. It says, Health, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. I want to read this verse 30 to 31 in NLT real quick. NLT says, and why should we ourselves risk our lives hour by hour? For I swear, dear brothers and sisters, that I face death daily. This is as certain. I want to also mark that word. This is as certain as my pride in what in what Christ Jesus our Lord has done in you. 
<clears throat> Brethren, um, I think maybe I have preached this topic before, maybe once or twice. The, the topic I had in mind to teach tonight, Holy Spirit changed that topic. It was something completely different. And while I was in the presence of God, Holy Spirit took me back to the topic we had on Tuesday, which was living ready, watching and waiting, or waiting and living ready. And Holy Spirit said, how do you live ready for divine visitation and for the coming back of our Lord Jesus Christ if we are not living by dying daily? Because a person who is not dying daily cannot attract divine visitation of the Lord. A person who is not dying daily cannot be raptured with the Lord. Brethren, while meditating on tonight's, tonight's topic, I realized I saw something I've never seen before. And one of the things I saw was, I realized that this journey of faith is actually designed or incubated with death in it. Meaning, if you look at the statement Apostle Paul was making here, I'm going to read that version again, verse 31. It says, for I swear, dear brothers and sisters, that I face death daily, meaning that the Christian life is surrounded, is incubated with a life of death. There is no way a Christian will ever emerge into the image of God without dying. True, we must know that this, this life of Christianity has been surrounded with death, different death from different angles. Death, one death is coming from the enemy to bring separation. Another is coming from God to bring emergence, to bring transformation. So every day, what I saw today why preparing for this is every believer must carry the consciousness that every day there will be things that will be thrown at us, either through the works of the flesh, either through circumstances, either through people to trigger death. Death, and you see this death I'm talking about, I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about either death unto separation from God or death into the image of God. Living, dying to self, dying daily, dying daily. And we can see Apostle Paul swearing, telling us that these things this is the life he, he, he experienced daily. A life that something is always coming at him to see if he was still alive in his old ways. Every believer must understand that the Christian journey is prone to face death on a daily basis. This means that the enemy will use circumstances and men to initiate spiritual deaths, which lead to separation from God. However, God also uses the same circumstances and men to initiate spiritual deaths, which helps us to emerge into the image of Christ so that we men may see the true Christ through us. Brethren, our families, our loved ones, and people out there, both believers and non-believers, will never, never, never 
be able to confirm the Christ in us, which is the hope of glory, they will never see that Christ without we dying to the self. Without dying to the flesh daily, they will never see it. The only way Christ can be seen is only through death. This death means saying no to many things that triggers the old nature. Let's quickly look at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 10 to 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 10 to 12. 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 12. I read, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. I want to read that verse 10 again. I want you to follow me sequentially. It says, always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Meaning, a man who is not willing to die, who is not willing to carry. If you, if you read verse, one, verse 10 again, it says, always, not once, not, not thereabout, always bearing about in the body, the dying, Meaning, these men, these apostles, they were taught, they knew that the pathway to the life of Christ is a life of dying daily. And they made us understand in the same verse, it says that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So, like I said, Christ will not be made manifest through a man or a woman in their environment, in their church, in their assembly, within the family, on their jobs, if they are not dying daily. And this confirms to you and I that Christianity is not a Libra. It's not a Libra, you know, uh, um, like people say religion. It's not even a religion. It's not a religion. It's a way of life. Brethren, there are restrictions. There are conditions to this life. Verse 11 says, for which, for we, which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal body. These men have been used to a life always, they are always being delivered the same way you and I are also always being delivered to death every day lost knock on your door to deliver you to death. Every day, Jesus also is knocking on your door to deliver you to death. Fast today. Forgive this person today. Apologize to this person because either both ways, God or the devil, both of them are initiating death daily. It that depends on who you want to yield to. One is telling you, chase money, chase this, suspend God. Their death is knocking on both sides daily. One, like I said, one is to bring separation. Like what happened to Adam? The moment God told them, 
point and clear. The moment you eat this fruit, you will die. And guess what? He died, yet he lived many hundreds of years. He died completely, meaning he was separated from God. The same thing is still happening to today. Verse 12. So then, death walketh in us, but life in you. Meaning, the only way the life of Christ can be activated, can be effective, can become valid and significant to all men is through death. Men will never, never. That is why, go and observe, people that made serious mark in the Bible, they were men and women who were willing to die to self for them to show forth their loyalty and their faith to God. Go and check history. Men and women who wants to live the comfort zone, the comfort life, the life they want, not the life God wants. You see, every Christian must understand that when we subscribe to this life of Christ through salvation, we don't have a will anymore. We don't. Because we must remember that we have been bought through a blood. There's an exchange. So because he has paid the price through his blood, now we have become a servant. We have become a child. Just like my children now, I dictate, my wife and myself, we dictate the rules in this house. We can't dictate for us the same way we can't dictate to God. However, the devil initiates different thoughts in the heart of many. Unfortunately, we also have the wrong people on the altar who are also misleading people. Not letting people know that your life will be regulated. Let's look at the book of John 12. John chapter 12 from verse 24 to 26. John 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Brethren, the Lord wants us to be with him. But to be with him, you see how he ended our verse in verse 26. The Lord will honor him. The Lord, the one that serves him, he shall be with the Lord. But for him to be with the Lord, he must be willing to die. Even for Jesus, Jesus, who now became the Savior, who came to save, he had to die to buy us back into life of eternity. The eternal life could not be activated until, until he surrendered himself as a token of sacrifice. He gave up himself, brethren, there can be no true life without death. I'm going to repeat that again. In this Christian journey, I say this with all humility, brethren, men and women who walk around us, who live around us, they will never see the true image of God until they see a man who is dead. 
The only way the Holy Spirit is activated to all men, the only way the Holy Spirit come alive at its full, the fullest potential is through death. I'm telling you, like I said, I'm not talking about physical death now. I'm talking about death to our own desires, death to the things that are trying to overthrow the will of God, death to pride, death to anger, death to rage, death to backbiting, death to unforgiveness, death to many things. Brethren, it is very important because if you look at it carefully, because this corn, from agricultural perspective, nothing bears fruit until it dies in the ground. The same way in the kingdom. In the kingdom. I've shared this story with you and I before on this platform at the Garden of the Eagles. Think about this. The Bible says, the Bible told us in John chapter 1, verse 1. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Talking about Jesus. The same word, the same word. He said, this word, as, let's go to John chapter 1. John 1, verse 1. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 3. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 now says, all things were made by him. Look at the transition. The transition moved from the word to him. They now went deeper. This man, him, was a co-creator. Everything was made. How can the creator, the creator, he got to, he got to the mountain of transformation with Peter, James, and John. He prayed to the point his garment become glistering. He got to get money. He prayed to the point, brethren, Oh, oh, the Spirit help me. The day this man was born in Bethlehem, angels came. Legions of angels came. He told Pilate Pontius, he said, if I needed to call on legions, they will respond. The same man, for you to know the ministry of death to the flesh, the same man, the savior, he got to he got to get simony. The Bible says he prayed. He prayed to the point that his, his sweat was as thick as blood. Yet the angel came, gave him more strength, telling him, "Sir, as long as you are in this flesh, you must pray." Now, not only praying, he gave him strength to now pray more because what it was, the measure at which he was praying. He has not acquired what measure he needed to go to the cross to die with. For him to die on that cross, he needed a higher measure of strength. And for him to acquire that strength, he needed to pray. Rather for the angel who is supposed to help him remove it, he came and showed us a revelation. He said, sir, you have to carry this cross. By the measure in heaven, by the scale in heaven, for you to obtain all you needed to die on that cross, your prayer must get to this measure. Now give him more talk, more oil, give him strength, and now pray more. He prayed more when he finished. He told Peter, Let's go. Guess what? That was why he could not abort the mission till he got to the cross. Despite the 39 stripes, despite the beating, despite the nakedness, nothing came out of his lips. Because anything negative he says, we abort that mission. Brethren, 
I come to let you know that this journey, I beg you, I beg you. I was talking to a family member who came to visit me and my wife a couple of days ago. And we were talking about marriage. Today, we have men, you see, let me be honest with you. And I say this out of um, a bit of observation and a bit of counsels that I've done. Brethren, if the church was given permission, the church of God was given permission to divorce like the people of the world, <laughs> you'll be so shocked. You'll be so shocked. You'll be so shocked how, how many people wish they can divorce in the church today. I'm telling you the honest truth. You'll be so shocked how many, how many men, how many women who are married, who wish that they, the only reason why many of them are not divorced today is because of what people will say. What I'm trying to tell you in summary is many of our fathers, many of our mothers in marriage, globally, globally, many of these people, rather than enjoying marriage, many of them are enduring marriage. There is a place for perseverance. There is a place for forbearance in marriage. But let me be honest with you, when you check the percentage, many are frustrated. And you know why? Because many who went into this thing called marriage, many don't know what it means at all to the marriage. They don't know what that unity is meant for. <laughs> oh my God. Brethren, there are few things the Holy Spirit has taught me about marriage. And one of it is what I'm about to share with you. And I tell you the truth, and I kid you not, my brothers and my sisters, if you are not willing to die to self, I'm telling you, this is not a negative statement. That person will only endure for the rest of their life. You will be bringing frustration to the one who loves you. Many today have been chased into adultery because the other partner refused to die before they enter the marriage. I was doing my personal study yesterday and I was looking at the book of Luke, chapter 17, and Jesus began to speak. He said, who is he that wants to start a building and he didn't check the cost? You desire something good. You desire... You, you desire one question I always ask people, what do you envision for your marriage? What is your vision for it? Because your vision will tell me what you really know about that marriage. If you know it truly, then you will know that you need to go and do another research. What will it cost me to have it? It's like a person who wants to go to medical school, you want to be a doctor. Go and ask those who are already doctors and ask them, sir, Mom, sister, what did it cost you to become an MD, to become an medical doctor? Many don't ask these questions. If you are not willing, <laughs> and this applies to both parties, it applies to both. You see, when you see two people who understood, who have a depth knowledge of the significance of marriage, the importance of marriage, and what is required, I'm telling you, you see, there are forbearance. Forbearance means we will accommodate each other's differences. I will understand that my husband has this weakness. He will understand that my wife has this weakness. At little things, they will, be, they will forgive. Oh, babe, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it that way. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Why? They understand that the heart of the other partner, their emotions matter. How they feel, man, that's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is always chasing our hearts. He always do everything to protect us the same way. That was why I believe in the book of Ephesians, talking to the man, 
a man, he said, a man must love his wife to the point he must be willing to die the same way Jesus died on the cross. You know what that means? <laughs> Marriage is for dead people. Not dead, dead physically. If you are not willing to die to yourself, I'm telling the truth. There are many times that your partner might misinterpret you, misinterpret, oh, babe, I'm so sorry. It's not like that. You won't be perfect. Your partner knows you are not perfect, but you must give room to listen. I'm telling you, you must learn to listen. One of the things I always share with my wife in relationship, even in marriage, please, I beg you, read my heart. You see, when you study your partner's heart, I don't know why I debated into marriage. Once you study, when you study, your, know your partner's heart. Don't, you see, I'm not saying character and actions doesn't matter. Study people's hearts. When you know people's hearts, when you remember the things they have done in the past, learn to give them a slack and listen. Babe, why did you do this? Babe, why did you talk like this? Don't be, you see, brethren, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you in the name of God, sit down, count the cost. Sit down, both male and female, count the cost. Many, many, some men, they have become, the same lady who came to visit us this week, she shared a video, a video with me. It was um, um, two couples that were being interviewed. They asked, oh, okay, Thank you, Holy Spirit. You ask the couple, the wife, when was the last time you had intimacy with your husband? She said, one year and four months. The man was beside her. The man was crying like a baby. What a wickedness. The man was crying so being like a baby. This statistics shows this a lot. When women are offended, women deny men more intimacy as a punishment. More. Statistics confirms that. Brethren, I'm begging in the name of God. You see, marriage, the reason, I don't know why I'm sharing this. Marriage, you see, marriage is like a person becoming a pastor. It's a big ministry. Ministry in the sense that God wants to establish another kindred, another generation. You want to raise another obstacle thing to you. It's a ministry on its own. Will you understand it? Hey, you will know the price it cost. It's a lot. I'm telling the truth. I was talking to a friend of mine today. He called me about this evening. I said, I feel like I've never had a baby in my life. Even though I'm not the one shouldering most of the breastfeeding. It is my wife who is breastfeeding. But the way my life is Sometimes, <laughs> brethren, please, I want to encourage you. Keep working on yourself. Many have taken a good lady, a good lady, because the man refused to work on himself. He refused to, to die to the flesh, to develop himself, to discover himself. Now the man has acquired a gentle and innocent lady. Now the innocent lady has become very frustrated. First, you, you can't imagine how many men are addicted to pornography because of the frustration from their wife. You can't imagine how many women are thinking of having sex with another man on their job. They can't just do it because they are Christian, but they are thinking of doing it because another man has frustrated them. Please, I beg you, I beg you. I don't know why I went this route. This is not part of my this is not part of my curriculum tonight. But please, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, do everything. Do everything. I'm not saying you should support evil with your partner. I'm telling you, my wife is here. I give my wife liberty to hold me accountable anytime. Anytime. There are times I want to take some decision. My wife will tell me, babe, you cannot. You cannot. The same way when she wants to do some things, when she does some things, I bring it politely. 
If you observe that you correct and your tone went off, there are times we talk off and your partner tells you, calm down, apologize. Apologize, brethren. You see, I wish our churches, our churches globally can really teach the church, the church of God, the power of apology, the power of humility, the power of, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I was telling the person who came to visit me, I said, how come we apologize to keep our jobs, but yet we can't apologize to keep the souls of men among us? When I first came to this country, one of the things that touched me the most, the first day I saw rescue animals, <laughs> Holy Spirit told me, Holy Spirit said, my son, can you see how far men, the extent men can go to rescue animals that doesn't have the life of Christ? I have watched some, some extreme, as in people will go, extreme risk, big risk to rescue. How many of us are willing to take risk to rescue the life of those we love back? Yet we proclaim we love them. How do you say you love someone and you cannot apologize? How do you say you love someone and you, you cannot, you, you, how they feel it doesn't really matter to you until you are satisfied? How? How do you call that love? If I offend my wife, my wife is here. If I offend my wife, believe me, I choose. You see, the journey to apology, it wasn't easy. I took this route before I was married. Years ago, I would tell God, God, help me to learn to say sorry. Help me. Because how do I stay in the presence of God? And some days, if I keep saying sorry, and she hasn't settled, then I come to God. Holy Spirit, intervene. I'm giving you a secret, though. When you observe that something is not working, go to the Holy Spirit. Please intervene. Bring peace in this thing. Please intervene. And within hours, or maybe a day or two, Holy Spirit will minister. Me, I can, I can surrender anything for peace. I'm telling you, if I, if I give you my rent money, I borrow you money, and I don't have money to rent, money to pay back, or to pay my rent. I'm, I, I say this online because it's being recorded. I'm telling you, I will never fight you. I won't even, I won't even scream. I'll just tell you politely, this is going to be the end. I won't borrow you again. I don't know. Anything fights. Anything. Because the moment I gave my life to Christ, I used to work with gang. This man you are looking at. <laughs> Brethren, I can call police on myself. That is how much tension I can be. Back in the days, if I get upset with someone and it turns to fight, I will call the police myself. I don't like to run for things. People are running. I've been through, believe me, I've been through some terrible things. The person is here. He, he has been to my campus. He has been to my house before. He's online right here. The day they arrest me in chains, they bound my legs. All the gang members, everybody ran away. I didn't move an inch. I don't believe in that. Brethren, please, I beg you. I beg you in the name of God. Let men, let women, let them bear witness that, ah, this person, there's something. There's, I read something yesterday online, and it touched me. It touched me. That, in paraphrase, the saying was saying, when people come across you, we they feel the tangibility of God's image. When people ask about your name, what do they remember the most? Do you leave people with negative memory or you leave people with joy that when people remember your name, all they can remember is, ha, ah, I can't wait to be around this person. There are many handsome brothers today, many handsome, many beautiful sisters today. They are the one hindering their own blessings. Many have twatted, threw away their own blessings. Why? Because they refuse to know what it cost to wear a crown. The pathway to the throne 
his death. I can, Minister Dunsi just released that song. The pathway to the throne is death. There's no cross without sacrifice. But then, I want us to move further. This means that we must be aware that the pathway to the throne is death and the pathway to the glory of this world is also death. When the enemy wants to give you glory of this world, it makes you to begin to compromise unto death. This also means that once we proclaim that our old self has been crucified with Christ, then both believers and unbelievers should be able to bear witness that the death of Christ is real in our lives and how we treat others. Let's look at Galatians 2.20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Brethren, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, and therefore, when a man, when a man, when a man, both gender, when a man and woman is in Christ, is a new creation, a new pedigree, a new person. Brethren, one question I always ask them in my Sunday school class is, how come we have people? This was the question that always come to me when I first gave my life to Christ. That how come there are people in our churches who have been born again for 30 years, 40 years, and yet they have not lost unforgiveness? Anger is still there, backbiting is still there. That dominating, uncontrollable spirit is still there. Why? And Holy Spirit took me back to this verse, Second Corinthians 5 17. It says, And therefore, when a man is inside, when a man is locked up inside. Many people are not locked in. That is why we can die. It will take a man who is locked when a man is in Christ. When a man, if you read the book of John, John 15. Let's go to John 15 real quick. John 15 from verse. I'm going to read from verse 3. John 15 from verse 3. It says, Now ye are clean to the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. That is the condition. Abide in me, and I. You see, that I, which is the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus, and I in you. Meaning, many have received Christ but not many have allowed Christ to take over. We sing that song, take over, take over Lord, but how many people are really willing to allow Christ? Because brethren, when it begins to take over, it can be very painful. The journey is not rosy. That was why we read where we just read, Galatians 2.20. It is not I that live again. When a man becomes a new pedigree, it becomes Christ begins to live the life of death through him. You carry the mark, the mark of that death, that every time they see you, they know that this one is a dead person. This man is dead. Brethren, I'm a living witness to this. I used to be a drunk. When they say drunk, alcohol was like, it was like a curse on my life. Like a curse. Wake up 5.30 in the morning to go to the bar to drink. The day God delivered me, December 28, 2008. I went 2009, like two, three weeks. I went to a gathering of other Christians. The brother Bacardi, Vodka, and the Holy Spirit said, 
they are drinking poison. That thing in their hand is poison, but they don't know. Brethren, please, I beg you. I beg you. Submit your heart. Let God help you. Submit. Cry unto God. God, help me. Don't let me destroy myself. One of the things that affect me, I always tell them something in my Sunday school class. I said, if I'm a terrible husband, do you know what my wife will be doing every time she passed by my Sunday school class? She will just be shaking her head like, you guys don't know your teacher. <laughs> this guy, if you guys know him, he's a very terrible guy at home. You see all of these things. And that is what many of us don't know. We think, I, I, I don't care. I, I, wish, I, wish, I, will, I will show myself. But you don't know that there is a convert, a convert that God has been, this spirit has been working on that person for months, for years. And the devil too want to initiate separation that day. That day you now react, that is the day the enemy will now win over that battle. The investment that everyone has been trying to make for years, that investment become aborted. Everybody today talk about Smith Wigglesworth. I don't know how many of us who know Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth was born, I believe, in the 17th century or 18th century. He was one of the fathers of faith. This man was born in England. He was a, cap he was a plumber. Couldn't speak pure English, good English. This man will lock his wife outside. Till morning, the wife will, he will open the door. The wife will come in. Good morning, sir. Cook for him. Do everything for him. It was the death, the death of that woman dying to the flesh that made the man to ask, ah, what kind of God are you serving? This man became so powerful. Go and Google him. Smith Wigglesworth. When I gave my life to Christ, 2008, these were the people I was introduced to. A man that he, he rose about five people from the dead. He will slam, he will pick up the body from the, from the, from the coffin, slam it on the wall. Go and read it. A man that was invited to the club to come and sing. There was a man, he has been trying to preach to that man. The man now told him to come to maybe a club like a party. It was unbelieving gathering. You know what he said? He said, thank God. I have been given an opportunity to preach. Brethren, by the time he held the mic, within five minutes, people were crying. This was a club. <laughs> when his wife died, this man was so anointed, he reads the Bible every 30 minutes. Every 30, he was so anointed. When his wife died, he lay hands on the wife. The wife came back to life and the wife began to beg him. He said, I'm already on the side of Jesus. Please let me go. Let me go. He and on the wife again, and the wife died. <laughs> Brethren, please, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. There's a generation waiting. Why do, why do, you, think, why do you think people take us, Christianity, people take us as people who are stupid? It's because even when people come to our church, people are even fighting inside church. Even inside church. Inside church, people are backbiting inside church. And yet, those people who invited, they are looking at us. They are looking. And the funny thing that we don't know is, most of the jokes, things we say in the front of unbelievers, in their mind, they are saying, how can a Christian be talking like this? How can a Christian be behaving like this? Brethren, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. You won't be perfect. But when men see the consciousness of the death of Christ in our lives. <sighs> Brethren, I can shock you. Some men cannot die for their wife. I'm telling the truth. If anything happens, they will be the first person to volunteer their partner. Even some wife cannot die for their husband. They will, they will, they will, they will donate him. Take him, just take him away. It's irrelevant. And it's just take him away. Why? What kind of children are we going to raise? Holy Spirit asked me one question years ago. He says, in, in the dog family, every dog has his own food. They say, we they raise them. In the kingdom of God, we are king and priest. Kings and priests. But many people, they raise their children like general children. 
You've raised them like general children. Why? It should never be like that. We should never. We should raise children like kings, like prince. We should raise them special. The way we talk, the way we approach, the way we say things. Brethren, another lesson to learn is the mystery of death. That only the way of the spirit can be activated through death. The way of the spirit, the way where the spirit of Christ in us can be seen evidently. Look at example, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at Daniel in chapter 6. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Look at a lot of these guys. They, I kept looking at that life of Joseph. He maintained character throughout. And I still ask, who preached to this guy? We never had anywhere where this guy said anything against God. Look at Stephen. Look at Stephen. Stephen was still begging them in the book of Acts, telling God, Jesus, God, have mercy upon them, for they know what they do it. Another lesson to learn from this story of the mystery of death is that the real lasting victory starts from the moment we choose to die daily. Brethren, if you don't remember anything tonight, one thing I want you to remember today is the victory of every believer starts with death first, not with the enemy first. The victory of every believer starts with dying, dying to you first. Many of us saw the video that went viral from James from the prayer storm in UK about the man who was, who was into witchcraft from the age of two, who was married to a woman of 60 at the age of two years old. The guy, I listened to that man of God, and the man of God said, how he trains people to be able to deliver themselves from every battles of life is you must become consecrated. He said, while he was in witchcraft and occult, occultism, he said the only believer that an enemy cannot bring down is a believer that is dead to self. Consecration. Consecration means separated to die to the things of your own will. Brethren, as we round up to pray, I want us at our leisure time to go and study the book of Colossians 3, 1 to 10. Let's quickly open it, then I'm going to read just 10 only. Colossians 3, Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 10, but I will read just 10 only. 10 says, And I've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. This new man can only be seen through knowledge. Brethren, let's make room for the word of God. A Christian who doesn't make room, who doesn't have an intimate, daily intimate relationship with God, we misbehave. Lord, me, let me tell you one of my weakness. Anytime I stay away from the presence of God because of busy, busy schedule, work and life and everything, I'll become very cranky. Things piss me off easily. I won't say things but I'll be, I'll be cranky. I'll be so upset at little, little things. Brethren, and what the enemy is trying to do is to make us compromise, to separate you and I. I beg you, make room for the word of God. Go and check out Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the spirit. Are these things in my life? Lord, don't let me become, don't let me disgrace you. I told you a testimony. I've shared it here before. A colleague that I've worked with before, who mentioned is from Africa. This guy, very skinny guy, a guy that I can contend with, to fight with. He will say many things. Holy Spirit will just tell me, ignore him. 
ignore him. Ignore him. One day, he now made this statement to me after three years. He said, do you know that everything, he said, do you know that everything I did back then also tempt you if you're truly a Christian? Honestly, honestly before God. I know in movies, we know people, men can be into witchcraft. Honestly before God. The first thing that came to my mind is this guy must be a witch. Are you serious? You said those terrible things to me back then because you wanted to know if I'm, if I'm a true Christian? <laughs> Brethren, please, I beg you. I beg you. If God, if we, we will become the true witness. A witness is a person that brings fact and truth to the scene. If people would believe this Jesus, then we must be willing to die to self. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, as we go into this weekend, as we go to bed tonight, give us the grace to go into the sacred place and battle with the works of the flesh. Open our eyes of understanding to know that this journey comes with a price. Help us, O oh God, to contend daily to mortify, to put to death the deeds of the flesh daily. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Help us, O oh God. Don't let us waste the helpers you have brought around us. Don't let us waste the opportunities you have brought around us. Don't let us waste the resources, O oh God. Father, let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you for having